This is my full review for Sins Rise of Wrath, uh, or it's all the Sins decks essentially, but we'll, I'm showing the Rise of Wrath deck here. Uh, the gameplay is basically the same across all of them. So let's talk first about how the game works really quickly. I do have a full playthrough video available. So the game is basically, you're going to have a hand of cards, uh, typically five, but there are some other cases. And then you can play those cards for various things. You can play them to buy cards into your deck. So for instance, uh, this one is worth one yellow, and this one costs one of anything. So I could play this card, I could use its ability also, and I could buy this card into my discard pile uh, uh, for a buy turn. You can also attack the other player, and you attack uh, going back and forth where you're attacking and defending. So this is a orange attack, a green attack. And then, for instance, this would be, if the other player played it, four pink defense. So that would defend against up to four of these pink attack, uh, attack cards. I think the actual name is uh, power and weakness, but uh, essentially it's an it's a attack or, or buy symbol. The other aspect is each card, when it's played, you can use the effect of it. So different decks uh, are gonna have different like weaknesses, different power, and different uh, art, obviously, and different uh, uh, effects on the card. So this one lets you move to the top card of any card pile and return it to the bottom. And this one's like discard the next card played and, and so forth. The unique thing about sins is that when you attack someone, one is that defending is somewhat easier, but you do lose that card. You can't play it on your next turn. So you have to make a decision on do I want to defend or do I want to save it and attack next turn because you can't win defending, you can only win attacking. The other, the other interesting thing about Sins is that when you win an attack, um, what'll happen is you'll have your cards in, uh, in your deck and you'll actually be randomly, unless you know what cards are there, taking cards and putting them on the, their, uh, uh, I forget what it is, but the, it's weakness pile is what I call it. So you put it on their weakness pile and then when it's flipped over, you have to have enough weakness in there, which uh, I think it's five or more, to do to essentially get a domination. And you win the game, a standard length game, with two domination. Uh, and that can be either adjusted for a shorter game for one domination or a longer game for three domination. So uh, those are kind of the basics. You can see the full playthrough in the playthrough video. And I'd recommend watching it because it shows uh, uh, a lot of the mechanics in more detail than I'm, than I'm going over here. But So let's talk about the game. Um, it's a two to six player deck builder. I've, now I will say I've only played, been able to play it two players because of the ongoing uh, pandemic. But um, for two players it works well. I do suspect that at larger player counts it'll be uh, a little bit long. Uh, I think the gameplay is going to go up, you know, maybe like 20 minutes per player. So you're talking about a, a little bit longer game if you play the standard length. If you play maybe the shorter game, then people get knocked out. But then again, people get knocked out of the game. And uh, with more people, it may be, may be less, uh, less encouraging. But for the sake of this review, we're going to be focused on the two-player version of the game. Um, the art. So the art is really well done. Actually, their illustrations and actually the, the even the even the card printing is really nice. I think that uh, you know the artistic direction of the game looks really good. It goes with the theme, although I will say the theme is more of a artistic theme than an actual theme. This could be you know you could apply this to a lot uh, a lot of different things. The other unique thing is is that each there's like a, a pre-built deck of cards that comes with everything you need to play a two-player game. So you can buy just this one deck of cards. Uh, I think it retails at like $20. And you can actually play a two-player version of the game and play like a real deck building experience um, with that. The other unique aspect is the way the attacking works. So the fact that you have to attack someone, you randomly are put, piling up these cards, which some of these are going to be, this one essentially gives you no weakness, and this is in your base deck, so you could end up with these cards in there. Now you are getting them rid of your, getting them out of your deck, but there is a push your luck, luck aspect to this, where 
you need to pile up enough cards that you think will cause them domination before you flip them and and actually see you know how how much uh, how much weakness you get otherwise you've wasted all those attacks so the uh, a lot of times what I saw is I was not good good at gauging how much I need to put there in there in, in the pile I always erred on the side of putting more stuff in than, than less because I didn't want to waste all that effort to put a, to put them in uh, to essentially get them over there because it is it can be very difficult if the if your opponent is defending really well. Um, so let me talk about the things I, I liked in addition to that. I liked the fact that the gameplay was pretty quick. Once you knew what you were doing, you were moving back and forth. Um, and I liked the fact that you potentially could play a, a couple games pretty quickly. The one thing I didn't like at, is I don't think it'll scale well to, to larger player accounts. And I also don't think that all these effects are balanced. So sometimes the the cost of the card, it does seem that the more costly cards are more powerful, but you, know, you also need a distribution of them in your deck. And sometimes the card that you want to buy, you just cannot buy because you don't have the, the cards in your hand randomly. So there's a limitation uh, limitation there and then uh, you know, some of these cards are really good at getting early in early in the game second criticism is the beginning of the game is a little bit slow it's kind of I guess like any deck builder there's probably ways to speed that up maybe doing like an initial draft of like three cards into your deck or something to get kind of an initial seed um, to speed up the game which might be a unique variant maybe people have proposed it online um, the other thing is I found that the Standard length game, the two domination game, while it tended to drag on a little bit, and and what I mean by that is is that when I played the shorter uh, one domination games, it felt like you were, you know, you were on the verge of death from the very beginning, and you really had to focus on attacking to to defeat your opponent, but also defending to make sure you didn't get uh, those cards in in your pile. Um, so I would, I would lean more towards playing the one domination game because the fun aspects of the game are the attacking and the deck building. Um, and both of those really get compressed with the, with the, uh, with the uh, one domination game. So I think that that is my full review. My rating is I'm going to give it a 8. And the reason I'm giving it an 8 instead of, uh, you know, for my personal preference... It was, I was leaning more towards a 7.5, but after playing this with my wife, she really wanted to play it more, and so I'm bumping it up a little bit because I think it's it's got some depth in there for people that play uh, more extensive board games, but it's also accessible. Like, my wife doesn't play that many games, so uh, but she found it to, uh, uh, to be really engaging. So there you have it. That's my review for Sens, uh, the uh, a deck building card game, or Sens Rise of Wrath, as it is on Board Game Geek. If you like this video, please like and please subscribe, and please take a look at our other videos. Thank you.